Next Wednesday night, we're going to have movie night at 6 o'clock. No, what time? At 7 o'clock. It's my wife giving me uh, the message. It's on the, 6th. it's on the 6th, on October 6th. And it's called Nomad's Land, about a woman who decides to travel the country pulling her trailer and her adventures and the uh, people she meets while she's getting in touch with herself. And unless anyone else has any more announcements? No? Okay. Lovely to see you all here. Um, this is where I ask, who's here for the first time? Anybody? Oh, yes, of course you would be. <laughs> would, I see two back here, is that it? Oh, and, and one clear in the back. Would you care to share your name and maybe what town you come from? Maybe you come from here, maybe you're just in from Cleveland? No, Santa Fe, but we moved here, so Janice and Janice, yes. Janice and Janice? Janice and Sharon. Sharon. Nice to meet you, Janice and Sharon. Alta and Blizzard Report, Laporte. Nice to meet you. And everyone will even be nicer to meet you after the service. And clear in the back here? No, my name is Heather from Fort Collins. Heather from Fort Collins. So nice to see you. Anyone here for the second time? Ah, <laughs> oh, you brave soul. <laughs> Ethan, and I see you're with Kelly, right? <laughs> All right, well, good to see you. Um, I would like to note that when we come up here to sing or speak, we're not wearing our masks. Our lovely speaker, Leah, how do you say your last name? Alvarado. Alvarado. Um, we're giving her a not wearing her mask up here because of the crazy apparatus around her head holding the microphone. And uh, she'll look like the rest of us after the service. <laughs> All right. Well, I would like to introduce our speaker today, uh, Reverend Leah Alvarado. Reverend Leah graduated from ministerial school in 2018 with a master's in consciousness studies. In addition, she has a master's in counseling and is a certified strengths coach. She comes to ministry with over 20 years experience as a career counselor, spiritual guide, and coach. She was previously the assistant minister and senior minister at the Center for Spiritual Living Boulder Valley in Lafayette before moving to Loveland and joining New Thought Northern Colorado in 2020 as their associate minister. Reverend Leah believes in the power of love to help and heal and transform humanity. She is passionate about teaching spiritual principles that inspire people to make positive changes in their lives. So let's welcome Reverend Leah and she will do our opening prayer. Thank you, Gerald. Good morning, everyone. Such a pleasure to be with you this morning. So let's just take a moment and go within. Uh, so we take that sacred breath. We breathe in the light of this beautiful morning. We allow the rays of the sunshine to fill our heart, to fill our entire being. And we know that this day is blessed and a blessing for each one of us. We know that the light of the divine, that beautiful, powerful presence of the divine surrounds this space, blesses this space, and creates a container of love and light. I am knowing that each of us are receiving exactly what we need to receive this morning. I'm knowing that the perfect insights and revelations are coming through, divinely guided by spirit. I am knowing that today, is blessed, the music is blessed, that the music opens our hearts, 
that all is shared opens us and allows us to receive even more gifts from spirit, from the divine. And so with that, we let this go and we trust. We trust and allow spirit to do spirit's great work in our life, knowing that we were guided here this morning on purpose. We were guided here. We are here by divine design. And so with that, we let it go. We allow it to be. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you, Reverend Leah. And now we'd like to do our unity blessing together. For those of you here for the first time, it's on a little piece of paper you may have picked up. If not, just move your mouth as we can't tell if you're talking. <laughs> our unity centers us in light and peace allowing us to recognize our God within and to radiate that love to the world. Spend all your time waiting for that second chance For a break that'll make it okay There's always some reason to feel not good enough And it's hard at the end of the day I need some distraction
Beautiful song. Thank you so much. So the reading that I chose for today is by Marianne Williamson in her book, A Year of Miracles. May my way be unblocked today as I unblock my heart. The path before me isn't set in stone, but in my consciousness. All fearful thoughts result in fear. All loving thoughts result in love. I unblock my heart today that I might walk a path of love. No matter what path I have taken to this moment in life, I can change it as I change my thoughts. I forgive myself and others. I let go of the past and release the future. I remember that there is no limit to the miracles that come from God. Thus I am released from fear and judgment and set upon a path of love. May my mind not stray from love. May my heart not stray from love. And may my feet not stray from love. So hello again. (laughs) 
Hello, it's so wonderful to see people in 3D, I have to say, because in my community, we've been doing online for 18, what is it, 19 months now? So to see you all, even though everybody's in masks, I can only see your eyes and the tops of your heads and parts of your bodies. It's way better than just seeing, you know, on Zoom. So, so lovely to be with you, and hello to those online, hello, hello. I remember as a child sitting on the floor with my cousins, building things with blocks. Did you ever do that as a kid? And you stack the wooden blocks up to see how high you could get the blocks. And that part was really fun, but honestly, the most exciting part about it was when you stacked them up and then you knocked them down and they all came crashing. That was probably the most fun part, was to see them all falling, coming down. The title of my talk today is Dismantling the Blocks to Spirit. And really, we could replace the word spirit with the word love, with the word freedom, with the word peace, yeah? We all have blocks, blocks that stop us from expressing all that we are in the world, blocks that keep us from opening our heart fully blocks that keep us from forgiving ourselves or others, blocks from recognizing our oneness with all. And, and if it were as easy as, as it is those wooden blocks to stack up those blocks and to just dismantle them, knock them over, and see them come crashing down, I suspect all of us would line up to do that. If only it were that easy, yeah? But the spiritual path has something completely different in mind for us. The spiritual journey really presents an invitation, an invitation for us to step through, something that says, step on through, take a step forward. Each block and challenge says to us, are you willing, are you willing to open yourself? Are you willing to receive what is here to teach you? Some of you are already thinking about the blocks in your life, yeah? <laughs> starting, to, starting to think about, okay, yeah, I got a block there, there's, there's a block there. And I invite you as you think about those blocks to bring them into your awareness, but to do so in a particular way, to do so from a place of compassion and gentleness and kindness, because it's important that we be gentle with ourselves on this journey. We can be so harsh and judgmental of ourselves and how we do things, yeah? And so these blocks are there, but they were created as a way of protecting us. They're often created on an unconscious level and then, as we move along our spiritual path, suddenly they become more visible. As they start to interfere in our lives, showing up particularly in relationships. Oh boy, relationships. <laughs> Everything seems to show up in relationships. Now, I'm not just talking about romantic relationships, right? I'm talking about just relationships with the people in our life. Everything seems to show up there because people are God in disguise showing up saying, hi, here I am. Here's that trigger from when you were five. I, I, I'm right here, here to help you. Yeah, so, and we're not so kind and loving to ourselves when we notice these blocks. We judge those parts of ourselves especially when we've been on a spiritual path for a while. We learn these spiritual principles, we come to church, we read books, we have all these spiritual principles that we're learning and it almost seems like the further along we go along our spiritual path, the harsher we are. Well, why am I not applying this spiritual principle? Why aren't they applying that spiritual principle that I know they just learned in that class we took on Thursday night? Why aren't they applying that? So, you know, this is, this is what happens, right? And we expect ourselves to do these things perfectly. We expect ourselves to be perfect on this spiritual journey. I don't know where we got that, but somehow 
somehow we do that. As much as we may want to kick over or knock over those blocks, there's a reason that they're here. There's a reason that they are here in our life. And so the invitation is to greet them, is to find out what they are here to tell us. Find out what message they have for us. What do they want to show us? You know, the path to awakening requires discipline. It requires work. It's not all sunshine and unicorns and, and rainbows, right? I mean, yeah, we may think that when we first start on the spiritual path, and then it's like, oh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> this is not quite what I was hoping it would be. And I'm not saying it's not sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns. Sometimes it is, and that's a beautiful thing. But it does require work, doesn't it? It requires discipline. It requires commitment. And we can approach it with an open heart, and we can trust, trust that everything is unfolding in divine right order for each one of us. The blocks within us, here's one way we can approach it. The blocks within us, is li they're like little children. And I suspect for those of you that have children or know of children in your life, if a child came to you and they were upset because they made a mistake, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't shun them and send them away. I suspect that all of us would take that child, we would bring that child up on our lap, we would put our arms around them, and we would reassure them that it's okay. It's okay that they made a mistake. It's okay that they messed up. Yeah? And so when we see a block, when we recognize a block within ourselves, if we can see it as a little child, a version of ourselves. What if we did that? What if we invited that younger version of ourselves up onto our lap and put our arms around it and said, I love you. I love you. It's okay. But how often do we do that, really? How often do we do that for ourselves? and for others. I suspect not so often. Yeah, we, for, we forget. And when we notice these blocks and things within ourselves that we don't like, the last thing that most of us think about is wrapping our arms around it and saying, I love you, <laughs> right? That's the last thing. I know that's for me. Yeah, that's the last thing we do. And so, when we bring that version, imagining, and, and if you want to just join me right now, just closing your eyes and imagine this block, whatever block that you are present to right now, imagine putting your arms around it, bringing it up on your lap, and then asking the question, what would you like me to know about this? What would you like me to know? What message do you have for me? And then wait. And the message may come through right now. It might come through in a week or a month from now. And that's, that's where our job is to trust. But to ask the question and, and just trust that whatever comes through is absolutely perfect for the evolution of your soul. It's absolutely perfect. Because the more that we push it away, the more that we judge it, and say that it's wrong, or say that I shouldn't be feeling this way, it continues, it resists, it keeps persisting and showing up in our life. Yeah, that's how it works. We all know this. So this is really about loving all parts of ourselves. The blocks, the messiness, the insecurities, the fears, as human beings, we walk around with a lot of stuff. You know, even if we've been on the spiritual path for 20, 30, 40 years, some of you, I suspect that is the case. And yet, we still have our human stuff. We can't shun that. We can't push it aside. And we shouldn't. Because the more that we do that, the more it remains. 
So a gentler, more loving thing we can do for ourselves is love those parts of ourselves. Loving them is truly the key to dismantling them. These blocks are aspects of ourselves. And truly, they just want to be loved. When we can love every aspect of ourselves, the bad, the good, the good, bad, and the ugly, right? When we can do that, then transformation is possible. Peace and freedom and joy is possible. Love is the great healer because love is the essence of the divine. It is truly the essence of the divine and we are made of that. Dr. Roger Teal said, God is infinite love and that love has no capacity to condemn you. It only seeks to cultivate you, to encourage your blossoming into all that it has created you to be. The blocks are like signposts saying, pay attention. There is something here for you to look at. We are always being guided to that which will actually bring us home, home to spirit, home to the divine, home to love. As we dismantle the blocks, as we release them and as we heal them, then we return. We return back home. We return to spirit. That place where we remember our oneness with all, our oneness with God, our oneness with all beings. And you know, we can never be separated from this presence. It is always there. It is who we are. You know, it's like the, the story of the prodigal son. You know, this, this young man goes out into the world, he gets this inheritance, and he blows it all, every single cent. He just has a blast going out, spending here, spending there, blowing all of his money. And now he's wandering the streets penniless. And so he's afraid to go back home to tell his father what he did, because his father was the one who gave him this inheritance. But eventually he goes back because he's now on the streets, he has nothing. So he goes back and he's assuming that his father is going to shame him and judge him. And his father stands there with open arms and welcomes him and says, welcome home, my child. Welcome home. And I just love that story because that truly is what the divine does for us. And I, th I think on some level, I don't know, but maybe it's just me, but like there's some part of us that believes that there's this, this entity, this being that is still judging us or assessing us for the things that we do in life. And I think that maybe comes from old teaching that many of us grew up with that where the God was punishing and the God was shaming and the God was judgmental. Many of us, how many of us grew up with that God? Yes, almost every person in here. Yeah, and so, you know, but truly there is, that, there's no such thing as that. There is no discrimination in God. There is absolutely no discrimination. The God just wants to open its arms and embrace us and say, welcome home. Welcome home, my child. Every person on, their, on the planet finds their way home at some point or another. Some of you are thinking, yeah, but you don't know this person. There's no way that this person's gonna find their way home. But yes, everybody does. Everybody does. Now it might take a whole lifetime. It might take it till they're on their deathbed, but everybody finds their way home. Every single person. <laughs> we all came from source and we will return to source. And maybe we find it as we awaken in this life or we find it on our deathbed, but we will find that connection and re reconnect and come home. So it's important to have compassion for ourselves on this journey, yes? It's so important to have compassion for ourselves. 
and for all that we have to endure as humans on this earthly walk. We're all banging around, doing the absolute best that we possibly can do. And again, some of you are thinking, I know people who I, they're not doing their best. I know they're not. They could do better. <laughs> they absolutely could do better. But can they? I mean, yes. But then as soon as we say that, what are we doing? We're judging them. We're expecting them to respond and be the exact way that we are. Well, why can't they just be like us? Why can't they just do things the way I would do them? We're not really saying that, but we are saying that. Are we not? Our, our human selves have experienced a lot of hard things. Everybody in this room has gone through something challenging, painful, heart-wrenching. Every single one of us. But it's not just those in this space. It's those across the entire planet. Every single person. And so our blocks get created from these challenges. They get created from, from the trauma. They get created from the, the childhood where the parents were abusive or, I, I, I mean, it comes from so many places, right? And our thoughts are an important factor in, in our healing and, and our thoughts, we hear this in, in our teaching, how, how important our thoughts are. But our beliefs are even more important. Because the thoughts, a repeated thought, becomes a belief, yes? A repeated thought over and over again becomes a belief. And once it becomes a belief, it's like a tree with its roots going all the way down and it just locks itself into our, to our being, to our body, to our life. And so what do you believe about these blocks? What do you believe about your health, your finances, your work, your relationships? What do you believe about these things? And again, this isn't to judge yourself. This isn't to say, well, gosh, this belief is bad and I shouldn't have this and I shouldn't feel this way. Just notice, notice with compassion. Notice with grace. As you examine the, lives in your blo in the, the blocks in your life right now, what are the beliefs? What are the beliefs that you are holding related to those blocks? What are the beliefs that are keeping you stuck? Just notice. Just become aware of those right now. Years ago, I participated in a spiritual retreat where the teacher said, at the end of this retreat, you're going to break a board in half with your hand. And I thought, what the, you know what? There is no way that I'm gonna be able to do that. I've got these bony little wrists, and I'm, uh, there's no way I'm gonna break, I'm sure gonna break something. But by the end of it, we all did it. And the reason is, is because we believed we could. And as I stood there in line, as everybody was lining up and they had the board, the board was about an inch and a half thick. Yeah, I know, right? And people, you know, two people were holding the board and I'm watching everybody go up there and those who didn't believe they could do it, they threw their hand down and wham, it just hit the board and didn't break it. Can you imagine how much that must have hurt? And so I'm watching people, and I'm just kind of taking all this in. And as I get up to, the, to my spot, I take a deep breath. I let go of any beliefs that are hanging out there that say, I can't do this. Like, I know I can do this. I know. And he said, focus on the middle of the board and see yourself like you're doing it, the success of it. Just see it and believe it. And I wham, and I did it for a shot. And it didn't hurt. It, was, it, was it really was incredible. <laughs> it really was incredible. And, um, and so, you know, it wasn't because I was trained in Kung Fu, right? It wasn't because I had a lot of strength in my arm or my hand. It was none of that. It was based on my belief. And that's the power. That's truly the power of our beliefs. Yeah. And so, you know... It really is about that, our beliefs. If we have blocks that we are dealing with, if we believe that we will never, ever overcome that block, then that's going to be your experience. 
if you believe that you are going to be given the exact tools, resources, books, talks, whatever it is that will help and assist you in re releasing and healing it, then that is going to be your reality. Yeah. And so it's not the event itself that causes the pain. It's not the event itself that causes the pain. It's our thoughts about it, right? It's our thoughts, it's our beliefs, it's the stories that we tell ourselves about that event. The event is actually neutral. So think about your life right now, something you're struggling with. Is it the event itself that actually caused the challenges and the feelings that you're feeling? It's your thoughts about it. It's your beliefs about it. It's the story that you are creating about that event that actually causes the pain. Can you see that? Yeah. And so, so much of our emotional upset and pain comes from the stories that we tell ourselves the stuff that we make up in our heads about who we are in the world or about who someone else is in the world. We can be so righteous about how things should be or how we're convinced we know how someone is. We're convinced we know how the economy is going to go. We are convinced we know how this person or that person or whatever it may be, yes? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm right there, I'm right there, right? We have those moments where we just know. And it, it comes from these, these places within us that, that, that have stemmed from our beliefs, from our beliefs. Yeah. And so these things get locked in, and when we do that, our heart shuts down. Our heart shuts down. When we're in that place of judgment, whether we're judging someone else or we're judging ourselves, when we're in that righteous place, our heart just shuts down. It just, like, like you could imagine a door just whoop, locked up. And we lose touch with the divinity that we are when that happens. We lose touch with our connection and our oneness with the divine. We lose touch with our connection to ourselves. We're not giving our full self to the world when, when our heart is shut down. So when we are in that place of judging ourselves for the blocks that we have, or judging someone else for the blocks that they have, our heart has shut down. And you know, whatever needs to be healed will be healed through relationships. I'm going to say that again, because that is truly such a gift. And although we may fantasize about going off to a cave and being alone and not talking or interacting with anyone, I mean, the pandemic was a little bit like that, you know, right? But we, we're meant to be with people. We're meant to connect with people. And that is where our greatest learning comes from. That is where our greatest gifts, if we're open to receiving them, that is where they're going to come from. Yeah. So it's through people where we get to experience our greatest healing. They are our mirrors to show us what we need to be working on. Ah, yeah. So we are, um, as, I, as I was talking about the path, the path, our spiritual path, is really something that requires such discipline in such effort. And we may come to church on Sundays, we may take classes, we may read books, we may even have a sticker on our, the back of our car that says namaste, or, honor, or I honor all religions. But do we really honor all people? I mean, really. And I mean all people. Think about somebody in your life right now that just triggers the heck out of you. It's not too hard to think about, is it? Everybody's got at least one person. Some of you have maybe 10. <laughs> so imagine, imagine that person now standing in front of you. 
can you see the God in them? Can you, see, can you have compassion for them, recognizing that they too have blocks, that they too have pain, that they too have things that they are working themselves through, that they too have things going on in their body and their heart related to their finances, their life, their relationships? Yes, every single person on this planet has that. Can we, are we, are we willing to see the God? Are we willing to see the divine in every person that stands before us? Not just these beautiful souls in this room. We're all on the spiritual path. We're doing our work. We're doing our inner work. We're coming to classes. We're doing all these great things. We go out outside of these walls. It's a whole different world out there. It's a whole different world. You know, but that, how do we release these blocks? Is going to love. Loving ourselves. Taking one step towards forgiveness towards someone in our life. One step. It doesn't have to be 20 steps. One step. What's one step that you're willing to take? What's one step that you're willing to take to forgive yourself? What's one step that you're willing to take to resolve and heal what needs to be healed and released and let go of, but to do so with grace and compassion? Yeah. Every being on this planet has come from source. Every single being has that divine spark within them. Every being whether we want to see it or not. And some, I get, is a little buried. It's a little covered up with many people. But every person came from source. That divine flame exists within all. Yeah. And so, if it didn't, it would mean that there would be a punishing God, that there would be a God that says, I love you, but not you. I love you, but only when you act this way. But you, you're perfect. You are perfect. So I love you the most. That would be ridiculous, right? My God, I hope that's not what God is. I mean, I'm knowing that it's not, yeah? So every person is granted the same amount of love and the same amount of light. And the way home is through the heart. The way home is through love. It unites us. It unites all of us. Love is truly what melts all those blocks away. It melts them away. Dismantling our blocks is done so using the healing energy of love. Ah, so let's make a choice today to love a part of yourself that maybe you didn't love so much coming in here today. Is everybody willing to practice loving a part of yourself that maybe you have shunned or judged in the past? Is everybody willing to take that on? Are you willing to do that? To love yourself a little bit more? To be compassionate? And not just for yourself, but for others that you cross paths with in King Supers or Safeway or, right? We all are wearing our masks again, but sending love as you pass them. Yeah, we're all in this together. We're all banging around doing the best that we can on this path. Mm. Years ago, I was uh, coming back from a retreat in Toronto. And I was on this plane, and I didn't know anybody. I was flying back to Los Angeles. I was living in Los Angeles at the time. And as I sat there, we're in mid-flight, and I'm watching people milling about and talking and doing their thing on the plane. And all of a sudden, without warning, I was filled with so much love for every person on this plane. I don't even know what was happening to me, but I was sitting there, and, and it was pouring out of me. I couldn't contain it. It was so extraordinary. Tears were flowing down my face. I was so moved by this experience. 
And why? Why was this happening in this moment? I have no idea. But suddenly I'm sitting there and I am in love with everybody. Now, nobody knew that. I was just sitting there. I wasn't like giving everybody hugs or anything. But I was sitting in my seat and, and it just poured out of me. And it was such a gift that the divine gave me in that moment. Because what it showed me is that that is the love that God is. That is the love that comes from spirit, that pours out of the divine. It doesn't matter who you are or what mistakes you've made or what choices you've made or what you've done in your life, whether you have succeeded or you have failed, it doesn't matter. The divine just shares that love. And that's what I got in that moment. I remember thinking to myself, wow, this must be the love that God is. This must be the love that pours out of the divine to each one of us. What a beautiful gift I was given in that moment. It showed me truly what the divine is. And so any time when you are questioning whether or not you are loved, you heard it from me, know that you are. <laughs> know that you are, absolutely, absolutely. So I wanna end today with a release process. And I'm gonna have our wonderful musician come up and join me. So this process uh, is put together by a man by the name of Jared Hewitt, a wonderful healer that I have uh, followed for a long time. And so I, I invite you if you're comfortable, to just close your eyes. And just focus on your breath. Dropping into your heart. Feeling your energy just coming down into your heart. Release the need to understand what's going on in your life right now. Release the need to fix it. Release suffering. Release fear. Release any block holding you back in your life. Release all of them. Let them go. Release separation so that you can be one with all that you are and all that is. Release everything. Release the stories of your life and the stories of others. Release at all levels wanting to feel separate from God, from yourself from others and from the world, release. Release sickness, release fear, release pain, release lack, release. Release the trappings of your mind Release judgment. Release any beliefs limiting you in your life. Release the blocks and resistance to being fully connected at every level of being, uniting the body, the mind, and the soul. Release. Take a few moments to feel the energy and release the energy. As we begin the journey back, release. Release into the pure, open heart of source. And so it is.
See the order of service here. <laughs> Next thing that I would like to have us all join in is called our prosperity blessing. We don't we don't pass any baskets. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> and but there are baskets around. There's one up here and one back there by that post if you care to make any contributions. So if you'll Join me in the prosperity blessing found on that little sheet you came in or it's in your head. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And then I'd like to say our unity prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. We are the light. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love. The power of God protects us. We are the power. The presence of God watches over us. We are the presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. We're going to do a song now um, by Denise Rosier. Trust yourself, even when you're scared. Don't give up, don't give in to fear. All the strength you seek, you'll find inside. You 
are more than you know you are. You are more than you know. Round and round and round we go, we don't fall down. More than flesh and Okay, right now um, we have the peace song, and we've we've not done this yet. But if you can stay six feet apart and make a circle and stand up around the room, yeah. all right. Don't touch. <laughs> no touching. <laughs> Yes, there is peace on earth, and yes, it begins with me. Yes, there is peace on earth, a peace that was meant to be, with God as a creator, family all are we. a little more to say to us. <laughs> so we just know that we, our lives are just abundantly blessed. I am knowing that we are choosing love, choosing ch love for ourselves, choosing love for others. I am knowing that the divine essence of all that is pours through us and guides us on this journey as we go out into the world today. We are excited to receive all the gifts that the universe has to give us. I am knowing that all blocks are released, all blocks are healed, that anything that stands in the way of opening our heart is completely released in this moment. And so with that, we just give such great thanks for all that is unfolding, knowing the divine perfection of it all. And with that, we just simply say, thank you, God, thank you, life, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Feel free to gather in the front yard. We'll have some coffee, and you can be with or without your masks. Maybe not coffee. <laughs>